Common. Welcome, bienvenue, to Here's the Scenario, your favorite podcast or a brand new podcast that you happened upon and will become your favorite within moments. I'm one of your hosts, Mike Cannon, with me as always. Mike Feeney and also... Bonjour. Brendan Sagalo. Bonjour. <laughs> Bonjour petit. Bonjour petit. And our producer. Hi. My is that the first time? <laughs> the first time that's happened? <laughs> yeah. Wow. I wanted, to throw a ball. I wanted to include her early and often and see if she was willing to pick up the ball. Nicole, now how do you feel about that? I definitely dropped the ball. I think. Hmm. Well, we'll, we'll work on our it was, skills. Yeah, that's not what this show is about. This is a hypothetical based podcast. We do what if scenarios, would you rather's, f Mary kills, all that fun stuff. You bat around with your pals, and we get our questions straight from you, the listener. Pri- uh, preferential treatment goes to our Patreon. That's patreon.com slash scenario pod. We do a bonus episode per week, plus put a ton of additional stuff. We have a backlog of over 200 episodes of exclusive to Patreon. Never heard anywhere before uh, podcast episodes. And, uh, <laughs> it's just fantastic stuff. So get that patreon.com slash scenario pod. And they submit our questions. Let's do that now. Yeah. Right? I'm kind of, I'm very excited to do questions, you know, like answer questions. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, are you feeding off my energy or am I feeding off yours? Which I, one? Who's worse? I'm sincere. Oh, okay. I'm being sincere. I'm very, we, you know, we just, we've been talking. We just did a blunts with the Beezies. I'm ready to answer some questions. <laughs> Nicole, cut that whole thing out. <laughs> Welcome everybody to another episode <laughs> of Brendan Misspoke. I'm your host <laughs> and ringleader. No. All right. Tanya from the Patreon. HTS. Here's a scenario. You see into the future and know exactly how good or not you will ultimately become at comedy. And it can't be negotiated, but you can do whatever you want with everything else in your life. How would that change how you participate and structure your life going forward? In either case, great outlook versus terrible. Assume you retain your passion. Oh, if you're retaining the passion, then look. That's the truest nightmare to retain your passion, knowing you'll ultimately not do well. That's like a that's hell. But this is uh, this is an interesting question because it's not about career. So it's not like. It's not ultimately how far in comedy do you go. It's how how will ultimately become how good, how you'll, good be. you'll be at comedy. Like if there was like a grading scale, if you're like you'll oh, so always I could not be, be good, but be very famous. Well, are you happy with topping out here? If this is the goodest you'll ever becomeest? No, no. Are you? No. <laughs> <laughs> you were like we're like well, uh, yeah, you're like well, I am the best. So <laughs> I I don't uh, kidding. I don't. <laughs> just kidding. You better clarify. <laughs> yeah, you, know, you better in front of everybody. I was kidding in front of all the cameras. <laughs> let's just assume. <laughs> okay, let's go forward and just assume I'm kidding. <laughs> I think, uh, yeah. Imagine if that was it. That should be a credo of this show. Let's, We're kidding. <laughs> let's just assume <laughs> yeah. I'm kidding. That's actually a good message to get out to you, the listener. Yeah. It's actually new. Who yeah. are looking at this as uh, three problematic young boys? <laughs> yeah. We're, uh, you know, we're just trying to start a movement. We're just kidding. We're just kidding. See, <laughs> young we're just boys, kidding. We're not right? young boys. <laughs> This is off the rails quick in a hurry. Um, <laughs> I still don't understand the question. So you're not famous, you're miserable, but you still have the passion no, for the game? No, if you had the ability to know how good you'll get at comedy, your absolute peak of powers, would you, if you could, if you could, and you found out worst to best case scenario, how would then that affect your approach? And then also yeah. you don't lose your passion. So if you just, if you suck you have to begrudgingly quit what you love. I think I would. If that's your choice. I, well, here's the, here's the, the many different answers to that, I guess, is that if it's, if it's best case scenario and it's like, you look into the future and you're like, oh, it's successful and famous and all this other stuff, that might actually be worst case scenario because now anytime in my life, I'm like, 
I'm going to breathe for a minute. I'm going to have a day off. I'm yeah. going to do this. I go, oh, no, I, I got to keep on this track because fate's going to lead me here and I just have to keep pushing. And maybe the pushing, may, instead of resting right now, is what the thing that ultimately leads me to become this famous. Yeah. So, I, so it's like this constant fate versus destiny of like you fighting always and never knowing what is the thing that made you get to that level. And maybe it is that paranoid mindset but that would be hell i think <laughs> worst case scenario i would just always assume that the choice i'm making is what's going to eventually yeah. lead me there I oh that confidence. is whew, boy to live in that confidence that would be <laughs> that is supreme yeah yeah i mean it might make you lazier in a way if you're like oh i'm gonna get there all right <laughs> and i'll just keep doing what i'm doing if that's <laughs> what I keep talking in italian <laughs> I'll just keep the hits rolling. <laughs> if that's what comes comes out of what I'm doing now, then yeah, fuck it. It would be crazy if you're like, this, this is going to, if your career will get way worse than this, than it currently is. And, but you'll, it has nothing to do with career. I don't think this is not, your, this is not forecasting. Yeah. This is not forecasting what is career. Good. Oh, well, well, well. <laughs> I mean, say, now, we're getting, la vie. now we're getting into the zone. I like to call <laughs> The flow state. There we go, Brendan. <laughs> I, I really Brendan myself right there. Yeah, I there knew you, you had nothing. I started a da, sentence da, da, and I was going to say something, but it would have been. Da, da, da. But uh, I, I think worst case scenario, if you're like, everything's going worse and it's terrible or like, you know, yeah. it would be interesting to know if like a specific, if they get very specific where they're just like, this lane is not your lane. You're not good at riffs yeah 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 it'll be it'll never be crowd work's never gonna be your thing yeah you know? it just gets like it's or maybe it's like you're only gonna be you're gonna get very very you're famous only gonna be off, crowd of, work guy. Cr off of crowd work on edibles you'll sell out theaters <laughs> from crowd work <laughs> that would be a huge mistake on youtube now <laughs> um yeah, that's obviously the worst thing is like being like, oh man, I'm I'm always gonna be like that. Maybe you'll always just hate yourself. Maybe that's the lesson here. The ghost who's who or genie whoever is giving us, like we just learn the hey, Patreon member. We learn to <laughs> the ghost or genie <laughs> or whoever. <laughs> Tanya? <laughs> Tanya. Genie Tanya. <laughs> if if Tanya appeared out of a bottle sure. and uh this was a movie, I think that would be the lesson. Because you would go, Oh, I hate I hate that. No, but I go, okay, well, let me show you a little bit better. You go, oh, I, I hate that too. And then it's just, you just got to learn to love yourself. But what about the beauty of them being like, hey, stand up's never going to be your thing. It's never, you're never going to be good at it or you're going to get worse at it. You're never going to get successful at it. You're never going to make a living at it. Well, watch, watch then you, I'd leave. Watch, but that's what I was going to say. That, isn't that a freeing thing to be like? There was one time where we were talking, we had Greg, uh, the first time we had Greg Stone on Irish Goodbye podcast, we said to him one time, we were like, what would you do if, you didn't have to do any social media stuff and you never had to do stand up ever again. You could just walk away from this. And we were laughing, thinking about him being like this thing of being like, well, dude, then I just, it's the art and I can just go for it afterwards. And he literally said, then I would be free. And that is <laughs> never, I've true, never man. forgotten that yeah. to be able to just be like, well, that was that chunk of my life. Shed that skin like a snake and move into the ocean. <laughs> yeah, we've just done too much stuff to hide now, though. Like eventually, if any, you live but in. any job, yeah, any job that we would try to get after this is going to yeah. find what we've done. Oh, you could, if you wanted to do a Shit's Creek and open a apothecary or a fucking hardware store in the middle America, no one's going to be like, I wonder, let me Google that hardware store owner. You know what I mean? Like, That'd be like, worse. Someone who actually recognizes you walks in and they're like, you're Brendan of Brendan's tools. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the very same. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, I would be, yeah, I, I would just that life rent, behind me. I would rent out some sort of I'd be in a Caribbean place, renting jet skis out on a beach, serving yeah. serving margaritas to drunk tourists. I'd be fucked. I would have no idea how to make money. <laughs> I would have no idea how to get money. Yeah, I'd to sell get drugs. The air, airplane. I'd probably sell get drugs. The you would not sell drugs. <laughs> <laughs> would, who the only do you thing think I could do. you are in your head? <laughs> I'm Brian Cranston. Would, what kind of drugs? I would sell drugs. The man with years of uh, IT experience <laughs> could easily walk into Ever. any company and get a job. And he's like, I'd, all I know, I'd have to sell meth. All I know yeah. are the streets. Yeah. You can't put me anywhere. Being in that interview, though, when the guy's like, so you were just a comedian? For <laughs> yeah, there's a... Uh, you're like, yeah. There's a gap here for about 11 years. Yeah, put it together. 
<laughs> put what put it, together? Just be like, yeah, put it together. Don't make me say it. Don't you make could, me uh, say you I could bring me it. into pitch meetings and I could be super yes, irritating with dude. riffs and ideas yes. and completely take us off topic for hours. That would time. actually be a quite a nice, uh, like asset that a lot of people don't like public speaking. It's like, I'll give every mm-hmm. press conference you need. Every like I'll stock zip, is tanking. That. Put me on live television and try to oh, talk I'd the company that. out. Yes. I would love to be a face Don of a Trevor. dying corporation just yeah. on fucking MSNBC slamming my fist saying, <laughs> you all can't buy out now. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be sick. Uh, okay. That was question one. <laughs> Anthony Conley, question two. Here's the scenario. Limited New York breast master. Oh, New York beast master. Sorry. I nice. Got, I got toots on the brain. <laughs> uh, you can control all of the birds, cats, dogs, or squirrels in the state of New York. Which do you choose? Why? Squirrels. squirrels. Yeah. They're the, they're the squirreliest. They're the most fun. They're the funniest. They'd also, there's, I think there's probably the most of them. They got little fucking teeth. But it'd they be fun run up to, your pants. Yeah, run up your pants. You could have them jump from trees. They're also very good at evading if yeah. you, if someone went to go attack them. Yeah, dogs can fuck you up, though. Yeah. Yeah, I'm trying to think of which which group could wreak the most havoc. <laughs> Squirrels you know can climb, though. The others can't really climb. Squirrels can climb. <laughs> Squirrels but can also, climb how like cool buildings. would it be? How cool would it be to, like, close a show? And then, you, like, we're thinking about violence. Like, who can we stick? stick <laughs> I'm not. Down? Yes, we I've are. I've been thinking of, like, we all are. I was. I said pointy teeth, climbing, jumping. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> I've been thinking and about he violence. said murder, mall, blood, <laughs> destruction. <laughs> um, so. Freedom. <laughs> instead of the freedom, all we could think of is that, Feeney mostly. But <laughs> what if we included it into our act? Like, at the end, we just go. <laughs> and, like, like cheerleaders. At the a end. fucking dog pyramid. At the end, that's crazy. You do an hour and then you just surprise them with this superpower that you have. Right. I would be, I'd be a part of the punchlines. I'd be like, (laughs) and then I dribbled a ball. Brendan would do his first joke. And if it doesn't land, he's like, "Ah!" yeah, you guys want to see something cool? Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, Brendan would uh, (laughs) bring out the towel quickly. (laughs) Yeah. I'd be like, so I'm from New York and uh, uh, dog. Uh, I would, I would like to do something like this. I would like to have this, uh, uh, a little fucking pedestal of squirrels carry me out onto the stage as I'm like kind of in like this kind of pose and I, I get come out. No, no, no. They're, I, I control them. I am yeah, the but king. One's I'm their God. Yeah. No, no. They step out of get... line. They see what happens. And so I get, I get, I get dragged in on my side on a, on the backs of the squirrels and then they kind of all jump. So where it kind of pushes me up on my feet. I grab the microphone out. The squirrels all run off stage and I never once address it. Yeah. Well, and why, I just go into my house. Why do you think? <laughs> <laughs> Break a log. <laughs> I, I would like to make a squirrel per- person have all, have all the squirrels come together, form a 3D person and joust with the squirrels. I think that'd be cool. The swords are squirrels too? <laughs> no, they can just pick up swords. Oh. Duh. Uh, forget it. <laughs> what was the third one? Dogs, squirrels, cats. birds, cats. Birds and ca- cats. Cats could be cool. Cat, you could. Tr- I think that's probably the animal you could wreak the most havoc with because they. Who's can- wreaking havoc? <laughs> Me. <laughs> the birds wreak the most havoc. I'd rob a bank. There's oh, a whole movie based off it, but it- by the same name. Yeah, but they they're not as deadly as I'd like. I'd need Old cats bird. because the the. <laughs> The sharpness of their claw and teeth and what they're capable of doing if fully unleashed by me. I mean, that could totally uh, that could I could rule this city. You're like a Batman villain. I'm Catman. <laughs> Do. Um, I Batman would I would use the squirrels to like rob banks and stuff. I think that'd be cool. <laughs> they can go into the windows, take some money, come on out. Take like a couple hundred. <laughs> I feel like we're not connecting. You think me and you aren't connecting right now? Uh, or all three of us. You don't think we're connecting right now? No. I feel disconnected. Did you press the button? I feel sincere. No nope. feel <laughs> happy. That's I feel why. fun. Maybe, yeah, maybe it was the timer the, the whole time. I all of a sudden feel engaged. <laughs> why do you have your glasses on? That's why. Uh, oh, maybe that's, that's, a, the, that's a different show. Maybe that's what it is. Come no. into the light. No. <laughs> Come towards the light. Oh, those are those squirrels again. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> <laughs> 
Stop looking at the bags under my eyes like I'm Alec Baldwin. <laughs> I'm cool. I'm cool. I'm, I'm cool. cool. I would love to take my wife out. Uh, I'd love to do anything that kids love to do without <laughs> my children. <laughs> he means coke. He means yeah, go out I mean, and eat, do coke. Do a Yankee game. Yeah. To the museum. <laughs> yeah. Like kids love those. Yeah. Things. You can bring your kids to that. Yeah, but I can't have fun. <laughs> <laughs> I want to do blasts in the bathroom. I, <laughs> I want to make Seinfeld feel uncomfortable. I want to twirl a pistol without the fear of <laughs> judicial punishment. Uh, Alex, the truck. Would you rather have a really embarrassing sneeze and sneeze twice as much or every time you are about to sneeze, it slowly fades and you can never sneeze fully again. Oh, I'll take a weird sneeze Love all day. Love a good, good weird sneeze. It's always a fun talking point. Dude. Yeah. It's, yeah. So it is for men. There was this girl, and I'll leave her name out of it, but in middle school, she's like, you know, first person to develop, like go through puberty, all that stuff. So she was taller than everybody. So she definitely was insecure about it. And she also happened to like in class just be like, like that, that was her sneeze. Like she was a, a wolf blowing a house down. It was fucking bonkers. That's hilarious. Dude. People well, laughed so like hard. Skyrim. People were like, "Oh my god, you ogre bitch!" I can't uh, believe that, that came was you saying that. Nah. Like, right, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> like, that was the me. most in your voice like, anything's ever. Yeah. <laughs> now I do know a lot of women who I know. I knew a girl who she'd go like. Like she oh, like squeeze oh, like a mousy oh. sneeze. No. Do you think that was put on? Do you think she was like, I want to? No, I think everyone has their small. own. I don't think you can really like. You can only get. I think you can make a sneeze louder. Trying to make a sneeze softer, you're always like. <laughs> you know, yeah, like it the makes worst. You do I involve. do that, and Nicole always says I'm gonna have a brain aneurysm. She yeah. has the most problems with my sneeze. Anybody <laughs> that has ever had problems with sneezes. like, <laughs> she, she ever say just let it out? The thing is, she'll do this, and it's like. Do you do you get the like sneeze blue balls like because she'll that thing of it fades away and doesn't come yeah. back and you can't I get sneeze. that sometimes Nicole will intentionally like see me start to go like wall eyed and then just be like bless you bless you oh and I as, fucking and, hate that and it like triggers something in my brain that shuts the sneeze I down and I'm like, uh, 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 like I just can't you remember get it out you remember Irish goodbye in your brain when we were in the studio we were in the tiny studio and you were gonna sneeze and I just grabbed your nose and cut it off oh that's the angriest I think I've ever been insane he was gonna sneeze in that tiny studio right here this far away and from I me. wasn't gonna cover my mouth yeah <laughs> he was like not. this but you didn't know that. There's no way for you to know that. I saw this. There is nothing. There was no bracing. Than sneezing on someone on purpose. There was a time. It's so funny. There was a time where Nicole and I were like <laughs> very into like busting each other's balls. Yeah. It was like, like real like. You were like, like that TikTok couple that shoots paint uh, <laughs> on each other. And they all go. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. then they have this to clean up the paint we're, in, we're in their healthy. home. We're in a healthy relationship. It was more. It wasn't like even that. It, it was like it was harmless shit for the most part. But this is where it ended. Of course, is that like four times, and the first two were like the hardest we've ever laughed in our entire life. Yeah. But I just looked at her, and she was like pecking at me and pecking at me, and I just fully sneezed in her face. <laughs> like did not cover, did not even like tense my lips. Yeah. Just blew a forecast gale force wind of spit <laughs> directly up her nostrils. So fun. And uh, man, it was really funny at first and then it quickly spiraled into a uh, you know, kind of a make or break moment for us. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> An ongoing time, issue. For sure. Ongoing issue. I used to like do that to my friends, you know, what they're during our little jackass phase, you know, we were all like fucking with each other. <laughs> I would sneeze on my friends and they were like, all right. <laughs> you know what I mean? They're like, oh, okay. I think this I mean, ends here. I'd rather you take the buzzer I, to I, my I, back I, of my head. Dude, <laughs> I'd rather you, like, stab me with a scissor. <laughs> it's so wet, cold, and gross. Do you it's, remember that that E-Bombs World video yes, where the, the throwing thro throws the scissor and it goes right into that dude's arm? <gasps> Pull it up. <laughs> Could we? I don't think so. No. E-bomb would take us down. I don't know, but that is like deep in there. It yeah. Was like in the, he was like, oh, what the fuck? Yeah, that was wild. A college dorm scissor, too. So it was definitely like not clean. clean. No, not at all. Um, so I guess we're all sneeze twice as much weird sneeze. Convoy? Yeah. Convoy on the weird sneeze. Pepe La Fumes, what's your perfect high? The perfect high, huh? Yes. 
the perfect high. <laughs> huh. They're all so good. <laughs> no, no. I can't choose. There was a there was a time in my twenties where the if you got just the right mixture of white wine and weed, just the right, just like two and a half glasses, yeah. two glasses maybe of white wine, and then just a a shared joint or something among friends while you're talking, and there just becomes that giggly the joint. The, the joint is huge. Yeah, yeah. But if it's it were just, a blunt, you'd, you'd be like... No, it can't be a blunt. <laughs> it, but it, it's got to be like... And just like a couple, like a thin joint too, not even like a huge one, you know, where it's like you just all have to kind of... It just... It throws... It's like adding like a shot and a half to where you're at, and it's a great... I remember yeah. Eric and I went over uh, our friend's house, and we both like, you know, two couples, and we all... It would just kind of had like a, a wine and weed night, and we... You were, got swung? We were laughing. We put keys so, in the vase. We were laughing so hard for so long about privates. so many different things. It was very fun. <laughs> it was very fun. Uh, would you tell us if you guys were swingers? Yeah. Yeah. I think it would be a whole personality. Yeah. You think so? What would, I would do bits about it. You ever hear anybody do bits about being a swinger? Yeah. Do, yeah. Really? Yeah. I'm Paul. <clears throat> yeah. Polly. All that stuff. Oh, pretty, yeah. Pretty typical. Um, um, but like hilarious 80s no. style. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> the answer is no. <laughs> like, hey, have you ever been no. to a swingers party? And, uh, you guys know. <laughs> I, so I'll say, I when I was on in Harriman State Park and we took th those mushrooms and I wasn't like, I wasn't very, I wasn't shrooming really at all, but I was seeing an 8K and just like watching the sunset and that like breeze that felt like the caress of your mother when you're a baby. Yeah. That, that would probably be one of my best highs. But I also got to say that being fully in the pocket on stage and not, and not feeling weird or bad or anything like no anxiety, yeah. just green lighting your thoughts and having uh, a great time with uh, the crowd. The that's also oh, sure. green lighting those weird, those weird thoughts <clears throat> and coming back, like trusting you and coming back from something that may not have done well. So you can spin it into something else and yeah. it just becomes this fucking awesome thing where you're both telling your material the best you've ever told it and you're riffing and it's a, it's this mix yeah. of everything where you're like, oh, I am truly surfing. Dude, I honestly had that moment at New York Comedy Club last weekend where I was like, like I got a couple messages from people being like that and like I people afterwards were so kind about it and it, it really made me think of being like, man, because those are, you know, those 20 minute spots on the weekend. There's just so, there's such, I know it's like, there's a difference between 15 minutes and 20 minutes, there but it's is. a massive difference. Yeah. It is a massive difference. It, it, it changes your pacing. It changes your freedom and ability to go into shit. And man, it's like hockey adding a fourth period. And they yeah. were just, they were, yeah, <laughs> they were just a sold out show. Good point, Mike. <gasps> yeah. And I, and I feel like I just, you know, I was thankful that I had them from like minute one and just never like let go of it the whole time. And I just got off being like that felt so great. And then people and you were on marijuana. No, but you were talking uh, about highs. Oh yeah. I was going to ask you, about weed. do you, are you saying like being high end on stage and yeah. all that working out? Cause that is a awesome. It could feeling. go for both. That's the thing is that could apply for both is it's both a natural locked in consciousness high, but I will say I do quite <laughs> enjoy the uh, tender yeah. caress of some marijuana on stage when all things are going well. Yeah. And it's a, uh, that to me is, is almost the best that that's like the best. I mean, I don't really like get stoned around my son because I don't, I don't need it. So I'm not like looking at him in awe because I, yeah. so, <laughs> but the only other thing I do high that I love on, on a level like that is comedy. And when it's going well, that's dude getting best. getting That's high the and then more. waiting to go on stage to me those first that first at least minute on stage is like what a TV show would cut to in some sort of fun house <laughs> like mirror 
shadowy, like people being like, ha, ha, like it just is like an absolute unadulterated nightmare for me. Yeah. I, I never, I'm always like, I don't want to do this. I want to walk Ugh, out. I, nice. I can't stand. And then the, anytime that, like we have a one person's like, what? I fold in on myself and I'm like, there's, there's not a thing on this planet. Yeah. I hate more. If stand up comedy felt like that at all times, I would have, I wouldn't have done it past three times. Do you know what I said to some guy the other night? I was, uh, I was, uh, you know, a little, a little, Mare hands, uh -huh. and, uh, and I was looking down, and I looked up and made like just like direct eye contact with a guy, and I go, "What are you looking at?" <laughs> I've said, "What are you laughing at on stage?" I'm like, "What are you laughing at?" Yeah. That wasn't even good. <laughs> you get mad at them. You're like, "That's not even my good stuff." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, totally. Yeah, you fucking hacks. I call them hacks. <laughs> you like me, idiots. That's what I do. I deliver different kinds of material, so I grade you as all. Audience. <laughs> Are they, do they love hack? Do they love thoughtful? <laughs> thoughtful. Yeah. Uh, Josie. Hey, what's Brendan's answer? Oh, yeah. What was the question? Your perfect high. Oh, uh, probably when I'm like, Burger on my left knee, girl on my right, <laughs> blunt in my left hand, pipe in my right. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I like a good joint with coffee. You know, I like in the morning, a nice joint with a coffee, get yourself up, get all loony, but you're still, to, you're still a person, you know, it's a nice little speed ball. Yeah. Yeah. Or the high of being amazing on stage, of course. I meant actually being high. Yeah. I wasn't just talking about being good. Just I'm and most <laughs> and mostly when it's just going right. Like yeah. I, it's it's a special thing. It, it I can't really properly explain it to people that haven't done comedy, but it's just when when things are easy and it doesn't necessarily mean you're being hacky or bad or anything. It's just an ease yeah. about the they exchange. They're just there for the right reason. Yeah. That's also and the reason I hate thing. it because of how rare it's ever that easy. Yeah. That when it is easy, you it's the best feeling in the world because it's so rare to happen. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Oh uh, yeah, I've gotten used. Can't to even buy that yeah. drug off the street, man, <laughs> or find it. <laughs> find it on twenty four. I hate street. how you're going back to making fun of that. <laughs> making fun of what? Nothing, Josie. <laughs> I'm being sincere. Oh, okay. what are you talking about? I thought he was making fun of me. That's again. funny. I did start this by going, just assume I'm kidding. And now I'm like, I'm being sincere. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gaslighting you. <laughs> yeah. 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 I learned what that is. Can't get that high anywhere else. <laughs> I mean, can't buy that high up the streets. <laughs> is, is, gaslighting does feel good sometimes. <laughs> when you really knock a gaslight right out of the park and you just watch the temperature rise in somebody's yeah. head. Uh, yeah, you're there's like, nothing what better. Did I start walk? doing that? people you do, do you that. live in when? that world you live in the gas <laughs> and you light it often like what i just did <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah oh, you know. you're the human torch <laughs> <laughs> why did i laugh like a superhero <laughs> 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 I have gotten better since I took the glasses off. Yeah. yeah. Josie, if you could choose a date and a place for when Jesus was born, when and where would you choose? Uh, June 4th, 1991, at whatever hospital I was born at. You don't no. know? You don't know what hospital you were born <laughs> Who knows that shit? Everyone, Everyone on the planet. just been gaslit. <laughs> oh, he doesn't get it. <laughs> I don't know what it means. <laughs> I just I just use it. Um, no, I I, I do you not know what 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 hospital you were born at? Not no, not the name. <laughs> no, just the. It was like there were the doctors. Name. Why? What, yeah. what did I leave my watch there? <laughs> Why would I go back? Come on, that's not funny, Nicole. Are you laughing? Nope, I'm sorry. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> oh my god wow that okay. felt like the video of Shaq dunking Woo. on a guy and throwing him to Brendan the ground Brendan almost bit a hole in his lip he was so pissed Nicole you remember what hospital you were born at uh, I was actually born at Eglin Air Force Base in Florida Whoa. Whoa. yeah well of course I remember that <laughs> <laughs> Brendan was born in the Pentagon <laughs> he has no idea his parents were there for a tour <laughs> 
Is that why I was raised in story? Yeah, is that why I was raised in a tube? I could see him with wires coming in the back of a me? Camaro. <laughs> oh my god, that'd yeah. be awesome. Yeah. I would remember that too. It's just a. It's a hospital. It's you wouldn't right remember hospital. anything. Yeah. Nope. <laughs> no, but I. It's my like parents would memory? tell me. My parents would tell me. <laughs> Call your mom. <laughs> Uh, no. <laughs> Why? She's not doing so well. Not like she's not sick or anything, but she's just kind of, uh, you know, she might be in a bad mood. <laughs> Call her. Call her up. Hey, she's like, what? What <laughs> hospital was I born at? You don't fucking know, dude. <laughs> you were named after it. It's the Brendan hospital. Brendan McDonald's. <laughs> <laughs> um, where would you have Jesus born? Uh, I forgot that was the question. I would like Jesus to be born <clears throat> maybe on one of those Macy's Day, par- not the Macy's Day parade, the fireworks show on 4th of July that they do. Yeah. The big grand finale and they all do those big booms, like the last boom, just a baby comes rocketing <laughs> out from the bottom. In a parachute? Yeah. Or is it just torpedoing? To <laughs> well, hey, yeah, he's, he's Jesus, so he has the power to fly. So he kind of just floats. Jesus doesn't fly. Oh, Since he when? could fly. He Since like always. This. What is he fucking? He can fly. If he goes like this. Gaslit number two. <laughs> can he fly? <laughs> he can do anything, can he? And or she? <laughs> Jesus can't fly. <laughs> well, now I'm confused on whether he can be one or he of my can't. Favorite ongoing things. I already know it. <laughs> Brenda came right with it, though. What? Brenda's like, yeah, of course he can fly. He it can't. Helped, it helped make him so. I angrier. legitimately think he can't fly. <laughs> Why would you think that? Because he's a what part of? Because he lore? doesn't exist. <laughs> <laughs> but I feel like he would come down from the sky. Do you know any of his stories? Um, or history. He's just a yeah. man. I know some of Jesus' stories. What? Uh, he, when he was a little boy, he owned a bunch of stuffed animals that would come to life in a certain forest. <laughs> uh, his favorite was Winnie the Pooh. Get it now. <laughs> oh, Jesus. It's Christopher Robin. Yeah. yeah. Who would have ever guessed that from a bunch of stuffed animals in a forest? Did you know that? Never. I, I assumed I was never going to get it, but a I hundred thought acre you would. It. No, Woods. I know. I know that. You can't right. add information and be like, but that's what I said. <laughs> Put it in the comments. Did you get it before I had to spoon feed these birds? <laughs> Was that a Philly accent? <laughs> spoon feed these birds of the Wawa. <laughs> uh, I don't care. What you do. Oh, actually, you know what? Super Bowl halftime. Yeah, you know, I hope it actually comes directly out of Harry Styles' cock. <laughs> that would be so perfect. Yeah, ex- perfect. Loads his penis like a fucking M80 right in the urethra. Yeah, <laughs> Chris Pine was like, "All according to plan." <laughs> that is that all sitches. It's pretty <laughs> weird and fun. Yeah, that yeah. is another thing where you're like, I wonder if this is all yeah a game plan. Yeah, it really feels that way, doesn't it? Aftonius. Aftonius, thank ye. The earth is destroyed by humans and pollution. You have to get on a spaceship to go to another planet that was discovered similar to earth, air, water, etc. You will be on the ship together for 10 years. Your family will be on the ship already. You get to take three celebrities with you. Who do you take? Who do you take with you and why? He says, I would take Guy Fieri, Miranda Lambert and Sarah Silverman. Sarah Silverman. What a what a collection! Yeah, who was that middle person? Miranda Lambert, Blake Sheldon's (laughs) ex-wife. Okay, country star and Blake Sheldon's ex, and current hubby of Gwen Stefani. I would bring Gwen Stefani. This is who I'm bringing: Simon Cowell, uh, uh, Randy, 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 and Paul Abdul. And uh, just going to ask him about it. <laughs> you know, just ask him about American Idol. For 10 years. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we don't want to talk about it anymore. So put- how was it? Can you tell us more about it? That's going to be a no from me, dog. Oh, he said the thing. He said it. He said it. <laughs> uh, I'm bringing 
I'm bringing. <laughs> what, was what was that? Was that a small trumpet in a puddle? <laughs> What was it? <laughs> oh. um, I would bring Joe, the squirrels? Uh, I would bring Joe Rogan, nice. uh, Tom Segura, <laughs> and somebody else with a huge Alex podcast, Jones. and I would just do their <laughs> podcast for ten full years. By well, the no time, one listens. By the time we land, I'll draw. They'd be the me- most. <laughs> well, by the time you land in another planet that only you guys inhabit. <laughs> Inhibit? Inhale. Uh-huh. <laughs> I we're like, all right, Joe, what do we do? And he's like, well, we'll just shoot all the buck here. Well, it's a different planet, Joe. We don't know if there's buck here. He's like, then I don't have anything. <laughs> <laughs> then I shoot you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm going to bring that guy, uh, Nicole, pull up Christian Padroni's uh, Instagram. I'm going to bring that guy because he would be the only person's. I, I wouldn't even care about getting off the ship because he's a. Bronx guy who's a chef who just makes the most delicious looking food and the way he describes the food, you're like, fuck yes, I'll eat that. And so if that guy's preparing meals for me for 10 years for everybody, and it's like a big like yeah, family call. style thing. I want the Asian food truck guy from Netflix. Play, guy? play one of his, like, oh, play like that, yeah, whatever that second one is. Just any video where he's talking over it, it's very fun. I like a maker. Listen That's to his voice. Kid. No, it's very Bronx instead. So a possible. He would be very chill. I've I feel. Restaurants for years. It have to be my lemon sesame pasta. Nice, dude. I like to brown some butter with some really beautiful toasted sesame seeds and black pepper. We got those milk solids. We're just it's listening to this guy help. talk. Huh? <laughs> yeah, he's, <laughs> he's very. <laughs> it's hypnotizing. Yeah, he brings those out the toastiness. Seeds. Yeah, the way he describes Starchy the food. Water. He's like, my mom's a fucking Spaghetti. bitch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. like, and then you make this I mean, for your what wife. What are we really doing here, guys? <laughs> you make this for your pig wife and your Our ungrateful children. <laughs> I like to uh, put a little lemon on it. I have tattoos to cover yeah. the cigarette burns my father left me. <laughs> yeah, so that's one of the guys I'm bringing. Um, and it's good or my name ain't Giuseppe Villavage. I think I might also bring somebody like... like uh, Little like a, John. I was going to say, oh. I was thinking maybe like a a Tom Hanks or someone to just talk about... Did you see him in uh, in, in Elvis? Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> you still want to hang out with him after that? What do you mean? He's what? He's maybe the worst actor that has ever been on film. In <gasps> what are you talking movie. about? In that he, movie, for sure. In but. that movie, look at. But him. have you seen that guy talk? <laughs> it's exactly that guy. Yeah, I don't care. He's Tom Hanks and a fake nose and cheeks. Oh, bow. Yes, but that's your inability to get past it. But he is yeah, doing that's that. Everyone's guy's... inability. If you right. can look at Tom Hanks and see anything but Tom Hanks in a fat suit doing a goofy <laughs> accent, then you have the best disassociative <laughs> abilities I've ever seen in my entire hey, life. Thanks, man. Because that is insane. It's insane. They it's said he insane. could win an Oscar for I'm that. If, that if he wins an Oscar, <laughs> yeah. I'll <laughs> the Oscars. <laughs> bleep that, that, please. <laughs> he's like literally the front runner. <laughs> no, he isn't. Yes, There's he is. no way he's the front Dude, runner for the Oscar. Gaslight Oscars. 3. I, oh, starring who? <laughs> Now, now what I think is happening. Sorry, Jason Statham. <laughs> what I think is happening is I think Feeney's saying what he actually feels. God damn it. Oh. And then disarming you by saying he's gas. I don't care. It's working. <laughs> it's working. Uh, he's, yeah. he's fucking playing me like a fiddle. It is. It's outrageous. <laughs> <laughs> he definitely wouldn't even be up for best. He would be supporting I if mean, anything. He's, he's nothing. <laughs> he's not, he should be best birthday clown for seven years. Year old that would still say, "What are you wearing, Mister?" Is that on a sincere note? That on a, on a sincere note, that the uh, oh, Los Angeles that, Times, yeah. uh, Tom Hanks strikes out in Elvis. Yeah, it's a rare misstep yeah, that great illuminates a but great. It doesn't career. ruin actually, it doesn't ruin him for me at all. No, he's unbelievable. It is just like it's Tom tough. Hanks. The only thing he can do now: stop wearing makeup. Don't play characters. Just play Tom Hanks in something because that's all you'll ever be able to be seen as. You're not yeah. gonna be Dude, a fucking guy I in makeup I will say the guy with an accent. The guy who did Elvis. Right the guy who did Elvis. Mars could possibly <laughs> win. <laughs> the guy in Elvis who played the guy Elvis. Who played Elvis did my whatever yeah. his name, Austin whatever his name. Austin he was great. Butler. Austin Powers. Butler. No. Austin Butler. I'm Elvis, Austin baby. Butler, Austin was, Butler. Oh, I'm thinking Gerard worst. Butler. Yes, Austin Butler. He might actually win for that. He's Vanessa he, Hudgens' ex-boyfriend. 
Oh. Oh. It's also funny Nicole, that- how many fun pop culture facts have I listed? That was a fun one. You know what else is crazy? <laughs> While they were dating, she told him you should play Elvis. Whoa. Before he even got a call. Wow. Classic. And then he went out of his way. He was he he went out of his way to like do all this shit to get the part. He filmed himself. He hired like a whole thing. Like he was intense. I want him, and, get him and Miles pumped. Teller were like the last two. Last two. Oh. Yeah, and he I was supposed to, to be up Miles for Teller. but but he, he looks more like him. But the other Miles Teller was up for that role, and Austin Butler was up for Rooster. In, I think they both got in the Top right Gun. Thing. Mm. Oh, sometimes life for privileged whites works out. Yeah, yeah, just <laughs> gotta be born into it. Um, <laughs> he's all. It's also funny that Tom Hanks did that, and now the next thing is coming out. He's like. Uh, the dude in Pinocchio, whatever his oh, name Geppetto, is. Geppetto. I wish upon the wish. Yeah, he's like in that one. Like, Stop. Yeah, it's so strange. It's like, come on, Tom. That's put away the brutal. mustache and the prosthetics. You're never nothing You're not besides yourself. You'll never be Jim Carrey. The owner of a pedophile ring in Hollywood. I heard he was fantastic <laughs> in the uh, in the um, what, Mr. Rogers movie. Mm, maybe. <sighs> playing a nice guy fine i'll say my opinion on tom hanks will flip at any moment i love him i this could why yeah i, I won't flip. <laughs> yeah why i'm so i'm passionate I'm a about the work he's yeah. accepting uh, you could catch me tomorrow and i disagree with all catch of me it. if you can tomorrow uh, F- which he was terrific which he, which he was written. in knock knock <laughs> carl Hanratty. i fucking love him in that movie yeah, so great. much it's one of my favorite films aftonius the earth is destroyed by humans and pollution didn't we do this? Yes, we the, the, space, one. the spaceship one. <laughs> <laughs> you were there. <laughs> Remember, you had that horrible American Idol thing. <laughs> Put it on you. <laughs> Didn't go nowhere. Not funny. <laughs> that ain't funny, dog. You know what is hey. funny? What? All the reviews. All reviews. reviews. <laughs> How long have we been on? Longer than that. Probably like almost 40 minutes. Nice. So, wow. <laughs> so check them out. Write the reviews. This is a word of mouth driven podcast. So please tell your pals. And if you love this show, if you love us individually, collectively, all of the above and want to support the show on another level, go to patreon.com slash scenario pod. We do one bonus episode per week as low as actually, you know what? You'll It'll find out, out when there. you get there. But uh, it's great. We have a ton of stuff. Over 200 backlogged episodes. We wow. have vlogs, behind the scenes, Frank Rigatone stuff, behind the scenes, you name it. Feeney's got his solo podcast. I had a solo podcast during the pandemic. Yeah. Brendan kind of ha- helped. He, uh, he, has, he has some raps up I there. I have some raps on there. There's some raps up there. I tried to help. With my limited resources. <laughs> yeah, he's the only, I, only one that doesn't live with a woman at the time. Yeah. So, so Brendan does stuff. And uh, yeah, <laughs> patreon.com slash scenario. Uh, appreciate everybody. For me, go to MikeCannonComedy.com for dates. Uh, at this point, I will be back from, from Texas. Thank you, everybody who made our live shows in Austin so special. They were fantastic. I'm going to be in Philly. I'm going to be in Levittown, New York, September. 16th through the 17th. Come to that. Philly, I'm co-headlining with Casey Balsham on the 15th of September. Then I'm in D.C. Brendan's coming with me for that at the Comedy Loft uh, on September 18th. I'm doing a Florida run in Fort Lauderdale, Orlando, up to Greensboro, North Carolina, then San Diego and L.A. before Skank Fest. Go to MikeCannonComedy.com for all those dates and uh, check out Huge Mistake and White Privilege Homeless, the two specials. Hell yeah. Here's all I'd love for you to do today. Two quick things. Go to twitch.tv slash nyfreshmaker. Go ahead and hit that follow button. And then go to youtube.com slash Mike Feeney comedy. Press the subscribe button. You don't even have to type all of that into your browser. Nicole puts it in the description. There's hyperlinks to all this shit. It's very simple. Just click on that. Take you five seconds. Won't cost you nothing. And it helps me out. And then you can also, while you do that, by signing up for those things and subscribing to those, all you got to do is enjoy additional free content that I'm desperately trying to give you. And that is all. Oh, yeah. And do all that, but with me also. (laughs) (laughs) And go to my website, brendansagalow.com for my dates. I'm going to be in Chicago, Philadelphia, Troy. Uh, Troy, Troy, New York. Oh, I thought you meant Greece. 
<laughs> I'm gonna be in Greece. That's exciting. Going at a comedy. <laughs> I'm gonna be in Rome. <laughs> What's Greek? How do you do Greek? I don't know. Like that? Kind of? <laughs> it sounded like a monster. <laughs> I, I own the diner. It sounded like the dumb monster if there was a trio it of monsters. Flam! <laughs> Is that it? I don't know. Is that right? Twitch.tv slash sags to riches. I'm playing all so sorts of games. So, Nicole? My Instagram is Nicole C. Lyon. God damn right. Yes. God damn right. Yes. Man, Nicole and I, before Feeney gets back from uh, shaking his, his vag flaps in that <laughs> toilet, uh -huh. Nicole and I talked about what we got coming out later this year. Woo! We got a ton of shit. It's very Ooh, exciting. Very exciting. So nice. jump on that Patreon. You guys get the first look. Um, Jess E., the librarian. Here's the scenario. You have the opportunity to wake up to find yourself living as a main character in a movie as if it is real life. The plot is going to play out exactly as the movie is scripted. You're just along for the ride. Which movie and character would you choose? Question. Are you dead after the movie? Or do you if just that's keep how it living ends. that life? If that's how what if there's ends. sequels? <laughs> that's what I'm saying. And then you just live in that in that uh, world between the two movies. That'd be fucked up, right? Yeah. That'd be fucked up. Well, what's the movie where someone just has a great time? What about... Uh... <laughs> Van Wilder? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it never gets bad for him that much. I mean, no. they tell him to leave a couple times, but he's like, no. <laughs> no, I'll hire this kid for free <laughs> I'm instead. I'm 25. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Van Wilder is a very good answer. I also Maybe. feel like Goodfellas would be pretty great because if you're, if you're Henry Hill, you get to live that life. You get to be the lavish. You get the thrill of the, you know, getting away with crime, pulling off heist, having the power of and respect of everyone around you. Then you also have the thrill of turning on all of those people, uh, and those yeah. potentially dangerous people. And then you have the living, like a schnook, whatever he says yeah. in the end of that, in your own life. And egg noodles and ketchup. Yeah, and then you get to eventually, <laughs> you know, start calling in and to uh, to Tom, uh, to Tom, to, to Tom Howard Hanks. Stern, and uh, be shit faced and start really, you know, embarrassing yourself. So you're just the actor. <laughs> no, that's the real guy. That's Henry. Oh, Hill. really? Yeah, he did that. Yeah. Yeah, I used to be in Goodfellas. No, no, he was what it was based on. Uh, that's what they're saying to him. No, you were what's it based on? No, I know. <laughs> I am Ray I, Liotta. I was there. <laughs> okay, I remember the uh, cannoli. <laughs> that's Godfather. <laughs> no, it's not. Grab the grab the. It's Godfather. Yeah. Huh, look at that. They all I should know that is <laughs> <laughs> Giuseppe Fartolonos. <laughs> I think uh I would like to be the main character in like Monsters Inc. <laughs> you know what I mean? Mike. I'd like to be either Mike Wazowski or James S. Sullivan. Nice. And be one of those two. And I think I <laughs> what? I think <laughs> 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 Being Mike Wazowski would be cool too, because it ends with him doing <coughs> stand up. He coughs the the microphone out of his mouth. Does he? Yeah, that's great. Was he, he goes, always bombing? No, he's funny. Yeah. That's his. He's bombing as a scare guy. He's not scary. No, because there's that one time where he was doing stand up and the girl's not laughing, and he she, he goes, "These are the jokes, kid," which I think is one of the all time great saves. <laughs> yeah, well, if you're having fun, you ain't bombing. Am I right, everybody? <laughs> <laughs> Scaring is to Brendan's comedy what his comedy is to Brendan's rapping. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> this whole thing will end in in me rapping to a children's face. You're getting those black things from that. Or maybe that's from this. I think that's from this. I don't know what's going on. No, you're you're a, you're a whole it's a mess. mess. Um, but I would be. I think I'd be Jordan Belfort because yeah. I don't want the I don't want the murder per se, but I, I do want TikTok. the cocaine. I do want uh, all of that and the quaaludes. and the '90s quaaludes and the titties and the that life of decadence and just driving helicopters while shit faced and never dying. Yeah. And, uh, you know, but you really are, you do have to live with the guilt of destroying innocent people's lives where at least right. in Goodfellas, you're destroying other gangsters and stuff. So I'm you're sure he messed like with some pretty innocent people as well. You what? Yeah. I'm sure he fucked with some innocent people as well. Yeah. If they got, if they stepped out of line, that's right. Witnesses. Maybe Nick Nolte and blue chips. 
<laughs> I've never seen blue chips. God, we got to watch it. Oh, Nicole and I have an idea for the Patreon. What do you guys think about this? It's us three here on mic. So we don't even have to put like a, we don't have to do production value or anything like that. Delivering our favorite monologues like movie. Oh, that would be monologues. awesome. Yeah. Cause that I, would be th- this is basically awesome. Just so I can do that. Nick Nolte at the end of blue, which Chips you've one. done on this podcast. That's right. Many, many, but times. I want an uninterrupted like eight minutes. Oh, I'll do that. Okay, cool. Patreon.com slash scenario, but let's just learn the monologues. I just deleted everything. Um, You're just a toy buzz. The earth <laughs> is destroyed by human. No, I'm kidding. Uh, have Lucas. Have you guys seen my <laughs> wallet? I lost it. Oh, nice. Sometimes we don't read all the ones. Nice. Nice. Did not check. <laughs> <laughs> Did not check if there was Nicole edited. <laughs> I think he's meaning to. All right, I don't know. Alex the truck. If you were all truckers, what would your call sign be? Example: Big House, Baby Huey, Wild Bill, Roadhouse. Let's all say it without thinking. Just try doing it without thinking about it. Okay. One, two, three, go. Come wings. Oh. <laughs> Come wings. <laughs> your uh, we got eyebrows after you said it. <laughs> We're so I, like, oh, I said the wings. first thing that came to oh, my head. Breaker, breaker, come wings here. You going on route 62? I started. To yeah, I got it. a payload. It's pretty decent, but I think I can make it up the incline if I keep her in third. <laughs> come wings out. <laughs> come wings splat. <laughs> I was starting to say the first thing that came to mind, which was tall straw. Oh, tall good. straw is these good. are like our Native American names, too. Damn, dude, do it to me. Barefoot man. tall straw. What? Do it to me. Just just say one, two, three. One, two, three. Cloud man. <laughs> <laughs> not, what you're, not what you're shaped like. <laughs> it's hard to see where it ends. <laughs> Cloud man crying. <laughs> Cloud man tearing. <laughs> tearing up. <laughs> ah, we got Cloud man tearing up over here. <laughs> That's Cloud man over and out. <laughs> <laughs> we call him Cloud Man because he's constantly raining. <laughs> Is that Nate Bargatze on the other line? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I, I don't oh, know what, what would yours be? One, two, three, go. A uh, tiny horse. <laughs> <laughs> What was the second word? Corset? Oh, tiny horse. Horse. It's tiny it's horse, horse. Tiny horse. Tiny horse. Tiny horse. It's a tiny corset. I panic. Tiny horse. <laughs> That's yeah, a I pony. It's a pony. <laughs> it's like, pony. what? Uh, tiny uh, horse. <laughs> <laughs> All right. What's next? That's great. Those are good call signs. Um, <laughs> Josie. Oh, I don't know why I thought that'd work. Well, that's cool. It would have been. You gotta like swing it. Oh, my heart hurts. This is it. <laughs> <laughs> this is the one. <laughs> no, I think I'm okay. Okay, uh, which would come out on top in a fight? A hippopotamus or a rhinoceros? I feel like we've done this before. Yeah. And the answer is always going to be hippopotamus. They'll fuck anything up. Yeah. They'll kill everything. If they kill lions. I, I think nuts. it's like more luck than we think, though. Because I feel like if the rhino really gets a gash in the side of that hippo, it's fucked up. But they have up. such thick skin, the, the hippo, and the hippo has the ability to bring them underwater. The rhino is just right. like fucking stands there. How? Wh- what's heavier, a rhino or a hippo? I bet the biggest hippo and the biggest rhino is probably not, it's not too far off, but I would bet the rhino. They're like just different looking cars. Like one is more <laughs> of an angular and the other one is like a round moon roof <laughs> yeah. vehicle. Yeah. <laughs> One's yeah. a Volkswagen bug and the other's yeah. a small pickup. That's right. <laughs> yeah. Or like an old model Mercedes. Yeah. And one of them's a cheetah. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> well, we've come to a come to <laughs> a pass here. Are you okay? No. <laughs> no, I'm not. Um, okay. Next question. Or are we looking at who's bigger? I think it's a rhino, a male rhino. Weighs between 3,000 to over 6,000 pounds. Whoa. And a hippo? A hippo is 
So it's right in the middle. Yeah. Damn. Wow. But a well, rhino. Rhino. the biggest Get rhino bigger. versus the biggest hippo yeah. is, is, is the rhino is going to have the size. I'm still wow. going with hippo. You know, what's crazy about that? 2000 you, pounds. You'd still go hundred percent. Hippo. No, gnarly, dude. 2000 pounds. Yeah, dude. 2000. <laughs> he is lighter. He could be more agile. And again, the water is there factor, an answer to this the water, factor. water factor. How close are we to water? Type hippo versus Ryan. We're on the beach. We're, We're on an island. We could a hundred percent watch this happen. Differences. And I know first hippo in a fight. Wow. Well, okay. According to who wrote this? According to Jeff. <laughs> <laughs> Doctor Jeff. All right. Quick facts about rhinos. Uh, fuck all. Look at that just picture. Scroll down because this is going to be like quick facts you, about did hippos. You know the I'll punch a hippo right. Yeah. Now. Just go all the way to the. This is like when you watch a uh, one of those documentaries Ooh, on longer. Netflix where it's like this could have been oh, one episode. <laughs> It is possible. A fight on land could end with a rhino charging at 30 miles an hour yep. with its horn and strong neck muscles thrusting into the side of the hippo, knocking him over and using his horn to finish the hippo and off. And yet a fight in the water may, may result. result in the hippo winning by lowering the rhino into deep water and using his sharp teeth to inflict an injury and the rhino drowning. So we're all right. Both of these animals can hold their own. All right. Well, Good. This is a non-political fucking <laughs> yeah. guy. This guy's got stock in both Rhino and Big Hippo. <laughs> <laughs> Big Hippo is my call name. <laughs> there you go. Ah, now we're Big talking. Hippo. <laughs> Big Hippo Brandon. We got Big Hippo coming through. All right, we got a couple more questions. How long are where are we? We're at, at an hour and thirty, I think. Um. Did we hit two days? Between fifty and an hour. Great. All right. right, A couple more questions. Thank you so much to our Patreon members and everybody that has submitted on Instagram. We do see you. We got to give preference to money, money talks. But uh, if you want to push those to the front of the line, go to patreon.com slash scenario pod, sign up, join the movement. Do that. Uh, Yeah. The movement. Uh, Paula Johnson. How do you do it? Sock, sock, shoe, shoe, or sock, shoe, sock, shoe. Oh man, this is going to be, if this is different from what I, my answer is, it's, it's going to be a big problem. Can I say, yeah. I will physically assault somebody if they go sock, shoe, sock, shoe. <laughs> yeah, thank you very much. I think that's psychotic. Wait, what is it? What are you assaulting them with? Sock, shoe, one foot's Oh pair, yeah, that's sock, crazy. Shoe. No, no, sock, sock, shoe, shoe. If Nicole. it's any other one, Nicole. I know people who dress their entire bottom top half before their bottom half. That's wild too. What do you mean? You don't like wa- shirt, shirt or- tie jacket, then pants. Seinfeld does that. What do you mean? Oh, in that episode. Yeah. Yeah. Oh he's, yeah. He's Documentary. Like tonight show. <laughs> yeah. Well, the, if you're wearing like a button up and stuff, that makes more sense so that you can tuck it in. You could just put it in your pants and tuck it in, you know, but if you're wearing like jeans and a t-shirt and you're just walking around, Winnie the poo with your fucking wang sticking out. I like that. You like that? Yeah. I don't like that. I like walking around without a shirt with jeans on. I feel like uh, I feel like a like a rock star. I feel like a cool guy. I feel like a college like kid. a retired rock star. <laughs> a reunion <laughs> like, tour rock like, star. Like Vince Neil. <laughs> like like Scorpion now. <laughs> yeah. I feel like a hippie there was put a, some sandals I saw, on. I saw a trailer, a TV commercial or something for the Scorpions going back, like Rocky, like a hurricane, that band. They're back on tour with like eight other bands so they could sell out a small theater. And um, which is crazy. They used to do arenas. But like literally they're all so old and they're like, here I am. Because they have to sing like, <laughs> need to go like four steps slower because everyone like can't Nero play as fast. They in the Irishman. Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> you like her. Hey. Yeah. It's a lot of like, you sing now. <laughs> yeah. Rock you like a wave pool. <laughs> There's been a striking amount of silence from the corner of the room once we asked how they put on their shoes and socks. Mm. Well, you just kept talking. What do you want me to do? It's true. Was it me or was it the Gabby gal over there? You're pretty Gabby yourself, you girl. <laughs> socks and shoes. Of course. Good. Of course. Yeah, I do think that uh, the, the other way is just no. Yeah, right? No, you can't do it like that. All right. Ethan Skullfox, convoy with everyone, I assume. Uh, Would you rather have to eat fast food for every meal or have to drink water for every beverage? So, Brendan or not Brendan? (laughs) I'd rather live as not Brendan. (laughs) Yeah. I'm I'm all in on water, man. Yeah. I'm like big into water these days. 
I am. I'm so big into water, I got scolded for drinking it at a party. By who? Well, no. That's not yes. the story. That is how the story. it went. No, he brought over water with very clearly had uh, six uh. to seven cups to be split. And Mike went, can I have this? And then put his ask, lips ask, all ask, over. Sure. It. And now ask if the bottle was bigger or smaller was than this personal bottle. size bottle that I'm it currently was drinking. Bottle. It was it a personal bottle. It was bottle. this big. So I yoinked it, drank from the bottle, noticed the six cups and was like, oh, my bad. And the guy was like, super weird about it. And I'm like, yeah, Oh, I'm was. sorry that I like, this is barely wet in my whistle in the first yeah. place. I'm going to need a jug. <laughs> yeah. 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 He was pissed. I'm yeah. Pissed. He went back to the bartender <laughs> and he was like, uh, he didn't tank the fucking cops. <laughs> and then and the bartender went, Okay. Is that the guy next to the other guy drinking all the LaCroix? <laughs> yeah. They really <laughs> Oh yeah, they yeah. get shit for mowing through LaCroix. <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah. He could not stop. Well, I had a funny part with the bartender too. I don't know if I told you guys this. I kept every time I kept going up to get another like high noon or something, I would uh I'd be like, let me get a water as well, which I was getting for Erica. So when I probably about my fourth or fifth high noon when I walked up to get there, I go Oh, let me get a high noon and a water. And he's like, dude, fucking great approach by doing like drink water, drink water. And I was like, oh, I should have water. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Two waters. Two please. waters, please. And he was <laughs> yeah. like, we'd give it to you. But that fucking asshole just drank all of them. <laughs> <laughs> Shaking, drinking it in the corner. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Last question. Last question. This Last is from question. the Instagram. We got to at least touch one of them. So yeah. uh, Eliza Jane, she says, uh, Eliza says Jane. A really good compliment just to me, not to you guys. And uh, uh, what? to all three of us. <laughs> okay. uh, she says, your God. And Thank you. Oh, this is the scenario. Your God. And I actually don't know. It's funny is as I was scanning it, I thought that was part of it. <laughs> blah, blah, blah. Uh, you're God. Your oh, we God. get it. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Sure, sure. Uh, <laughs> you're God and super pissed at us. What three plagues do you send down to make us listen? Since polar, uh, since polar ice caps, general, general idiocracy and COVID haven't worked yet. That's if you believe in all those. Hmm. Probably like a crazy amount of like locusts and stuff. I'm taking out all the fucking towers of the uh, New York. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> New York twin variety. <laughs> Don't tell me they've already done that. Just fresh out. All right. Well, I guess uh, all the fraternal ones. Um, but I uh, no like seven. all the cell all Maybe the cell Pentagon towers. Sheet. So there's no internet. No, no internet, no, yeah. no phone, no Wi-Fi. Solar flare. Yeah. Solar Solar flare. flare. Yeah. And just everybody's back to 1978. No electricity. Good luck. It's before then. It's like the 30s. What? But even then, there's no ro uh, there's no running water. Like, it isn't no, water's running. No, not if there's a solar flare that knocks out our whole grid. Not at all. Because Why? we rely on electricity. Look at Brendan zoning off on a. <laughs> I'm planet. thinking about it. No, you weren't. Yes, I was. You were absolutely thinking of a burger. I saw <laughs> it above your head in a cloud. <laughs> I was yeah. trying to get good enough so I could just grab it. <laughs> blink, blink, Think hard blink. enough. Yeah. Got you again. <laughs> <laughs> just became wah, 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 wah. <laughs> Burger. What? 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 Uh -huh. <laughs> All right. They said they mentioned burger. Come back up. <laughs> Solar flare. That's what I'm gonna do. Solar flare. That's a good one. I like. Uh, There's three. She's giving us each three. Oh. Wait, wait, we each do one. You oh, said right. locusts. Locusts. Tidal Classic. wave. You do <laughs> say it like it's your uh, villain name. <laughs> locusts. <laughs> No, tidal <laughs> wave. The disgust before you said no. <laughs> no. <laughs> tidal wave. Tidal wave's good. Tidal wave's good. I, I do want to see it. Tidal wave. Destroy the You're world. You're the fucking dumbest person I've ever <laughs> met in my entire life. <laughs> You like try to get mad at the keys jingling in front of you, but after a minute, you're following. Tidal waves, good. Tidal waves, good. You got to give credit where credit is due. To tidal waves. To tide. Hey. To tidal waves. To tidal waves. See you next week. To making it count. Bye, everyone. That's right, Jack Dawson. Women get it done. 
Here's the scenario is Mike Feeney, Mike Cannon, and Brendan Sagalow. Executive producers Robert Kelly and Matt Kleinschmidt for the Laugh Button Podcast. For more information about the show, visit Here's The Scenario.com. The scenario.